Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 8th, 2017. Happy Thursday afternoon. Let's take a look at what's happening out there. Sea surface temperature anomalies map updated today from the NOAA NESDA site. And we see a little bit more in the way of blues here in the eastern Pacific. And no more increase out here in the Nino 3-4 area. Uh, it's pretty much for the hurricane season uh, a dead issue in terms of the El Nino. So we're going to worry less and less about that or uh, never was worried about it. It's more of we'll pay more attention over here in the coming weeks. Let's put it that way. Uh, and speaking of that, the main development region still running quite a bit above the long term average. And you see that little crescent shape here. Everything's still pretty much in place. A colder than average North Atlantic, uh, the Caribbean Sea warmer than average. And even here in the Western Atlantic now starting to warm up relative to average. But the Northwest Atlantic right up here butting up against the New England coastline and towards the Southwest Canadian Maritimes quite a bit colder than normal. So we'll have to see if that factors into anything at some point. But uh, overall sea surface temperature anomalies pretty much where we would expect them to be. There's no major changes. Uh, but this, you know, here again sort of indicating maybe some upwelling going on and uh, no chance of El Nino anytime soon. In fact, the latest early June Climate Prediction Center International Research Institute chart came out today and this is the time frame that we are most interested in right through here, August, September, October. And as you see right there, uh, just slightly less than 40% chance. There's the 40% line and this is just under that uh, by August, September, October, and then the odds of El Nino going down, 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 and we pretty much just stay in a neutral state, and so that should be that, right? In fact, uh, people are starting to tweet about this more and more. This is Eric Blake, one of the forecasters at the National Hurricane Center, and he mentioned it last night, that the models are trending down with the El Nino chances, and combined with that warmer Atlantic, and that's what we have been talking about here for several months. Um, and it's just observation. It's not like I'm some, you know, genius or something that figured all of this out on my own. It's right there in front of us. We just need to know where to look and not depend on a model such as the Euro in January saying, there's an El Nino coming and put all of our eggs in that basket. Uh, I certainly don't do that. I don't, I'm not going to do that for anything positive or negative in terms of an enhancer or an inhibitor for a hurricane season that is still five or six months away. You need to look at what's in front of you and then look at the models and say, well, let's see if that makes sense. And we know the limitations of the global and the climate models for El Nino prediction. It's called the predictability barrier. And some people, and you know who they are, thought for sure there was an El Nino coming and that it would squash the hurricane season. And it's the El Nino part's not going to happen. Whether we have an active Atlantic hurricane season, we'll just have to wait and see, right? So, uh, you know, again, this updated, I did a blog about it yesterday on hurricanetrack.com. This is the June 2nd subsurface update. And, you know, there is still uh, a little bit of heat content left here above average, but such a small geographic area compared to the rest of the vastness of the Pacific. And then here's that area that's probably starting to show up uh, over here. That would represent this, I do believe. And so the eastern Pacific, uh, not in any hurry to warm. And then you have this huge area out here of average, right where it should be. You don't have a positive anomaly, no negative anomalies. And even though the SOI has turned negative lately, which would typically help to, help to develop westerly winds, uh, which invokes sort of downward motion into the Pacific, okay, well... They'll just be downward motion of nothing, of average water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's nothing. It's not happening. And it's probably not even going to happen in 2017 now. So we'll see. I just find it fascinating that some people just won't let things go sometimes. And maybe I should just let it go, too. And not. It's, you know, we have to watch it and see what's happening on a weekly basis. And at least you know, we do that here. Uh, and we just take it step by step. I just think it's been an interesting evolution. So I was mentioning 
about the Eastern Pacific in my last video update and how it really hasn't been very active um, even though they've had two named storms and that's uh, predating when it should happen by June 25th so it's a little bit above normal on the named storms uh, the first hurricane uh, for the Eastern Pacific usually happens by June 26th alright so we still have a ways to go and if we get past June 26th and we haven't had a hurricane in the Pacific the East Pacific that is uh, then we'll be running behind a little bit but the two that we have had Adrian and Beatriz were both eh, right so I'm just stuff like that you know you look at what's in front of you uh, in fact, global cyclone activity is very low right now. So if any basin is going to take over, where would it be? And I want to go back to this real quick. It is absolutely no question, it's plain to see, that relative to average, this area of the tropics is warmer than this entire area overall. The anomaly is clear. Okay, you have basically neutral conditions through here and then almost a degree Celsius on average depending on which data set you look at I mean just looking at the pixel colors uh, but I mean anybody you could just point you could get a, a six-year-old and say is this more colored in with orange than this and he'd say yep <laughs> I mean so you would think that relative to average the basin that has the most warm water in it relative to that average and that's very important uh, is the Atlantic and so that's the area that we I think would be the busiest especially if we start falling behind in this area so we'll we'll see how that works out so some uh, interesting things may be coming up people starting to talk about this out in the hurricane world on the hurricane blogosphere as I like to call it the Madden Julian oscillation which is that period of general favorability in the tropics upward motion and the ability for convection, uh, organized deep convection to spawn and foster and, and you know take root, uh, the Madden-Julian oscillation helps that. And it's very difficult to explain exactly what it is, but we can chart it and see where it has been, which is this line and whatever through here. It starts here. And it typically circles the globe uh, from, from west to east, okay? and so then we have the forecast here which is outlined I'm gonna go over it in red and this is from the GFS and its ensemble members and the overall envelope of its prediction brings it into phase one and that's favorable for Atlantic development usually but the euro it would just be nice if these two would agree to get along right <laughs> this drives me mad it's like okay the euro the euro is like your older brother who you know anything you can do I can do better <laughs> it's just like uh, so the euro says yeah phase one but just barely <laughs> very low amplitude MJO and that's what that would show the GFS is a more emphatic robust Madden Julian oscillation signal but the ECMWF and its ensemble members not so much and then it just gets buried into the null phase where there's really no MJO activity. So <laughs> we'll see. So let's just, you know, look at the GFS, and this is the ensemble members, and then go to the GFS operational global model. And this is the 5,000 foot level, 850 millibars. And what I've done, there's nothing happening over the next week, okay? So we're out at an hour 168. So we're fully a week away. June the 15th and I wanted to point something out so this is again 850 millibars up in the atmosphere the atmosphere is made up of layers and we're looking at about 5,000 feet up at the wind flow that's what all these little barbs are right here these show the direction of wind so the wind down here would be out of the southeast as you can see nice high pressure area uh, located over here deep layer high pressure and so a very uh, pronounced southeast flow of wind coming out of the tropics at this time then in the Pacific look at this the winds are coming from the west that's that is not how it's supposed to go and so this is setting up this sort of monsoon trough 
a change in wind direction over a region. That's generally what a monsoon is, right? You remember that from basic geography and earth science in high school, hopefully. So this is setting up an area, uh, just a large area of a change in wind direction and convergence in the atmosphere. A lot of different ways to look at this. And this green color through here is not precip. They changed their color scale. I wish they hadn't, but they did, but whatever. Uh, this is energy in the atmosphere, more spin or available energy. Vorticity is the best way to look at it. And so this is day seven. And just to kind of show you, remember the Euro, I'm sorry, the GFS showing a stronger Madden Julian oscillation out here by week two. I guess I should have mentioned that. This goes out to June 22nd. So it shows a favorable setup. Here's day seven, and then here's day 10, just skipping ahead three days. Now this is far out in time, and normally I wouldn't show this, but it's kind of trying to pick out the pattern. And you know, I mentioned Joe Bastardi uh, the other day. His pattern recognition skills are very good over time. Does he have busts? Of course he does. Uh, even great NFL coaches and basketball coaches have busts. I mean, look what's happening to the Cleveland Cavaliers, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Some of the people who uh, make the biggest uh, impacts in their field, and certainly Joe Bastardi has over the years, they have busts from time to time. But I've learned from him about picking out patterns and when to see what could be coming. And we look at the Madden Julian oscillation, and hey, that looks favorable in some of the modeling more so in some than others and then we go look at the maps in front of us that are produced by as an example here the GFS and I use the GFS a lot because a it's completely free all the layers and parameters you know it's taxpayer funded and it runs four times a day so it's easy to pick it up and show you what's what uh, the euro model is very handy once something has formed in my opinion and then we can dissect that when the time comes but this is showing at day 10, clearly, counterclockwise, weak cyclonic flow here, uh, maybe a developed cyclone in the atmosphere, we'll see. But what this is saying is, hey, the window of opportunity might be coming, so let's pay closer attention. And that's what I'll be doing. So we will be talking about this more and more until it either develops and does something, or goes away and the models drop it maybe maybe this sets up over here in the Pacific instead we'll just have to wait and see but we're we're it's getting interesting all right so the weather over Florida has been like ugh. you got all the rain you needed plus some and now you're gonna dry out uh, this frontal system and energy is gonna lift out and it's just been I mean if you like October weather the last few days in the southeast, parts of the southeast has, has been perfect for those who love October weather. But that's going to change and uh, the pattern will flip and it's going to be warmer and steamy and all kinds of summery things. And then like I said, we're going to start watching this area in about a week or so. You see out in the deep tropics, strong upper level winds, even looking at the cirrus clouds here blowing across. Not time to look out this far east anyway, but you can see why. It's hostile. It's hostile. All right. You folks in uh, New England, um, if this was February, you'd be saying, ah, <laughs> if you love snow anyway, because this is going to go up and turn into a heck of a nor'easter, probably too offshore, that too far offshore, I should say. It's too offshore, um, too far offshore to have created a big snowstorm if it was February or early March or whatever, even late March. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a pretty good nor'easter forming out of this pocket of energy here. A non-tropical cyclone, mid-latitude uh, system uh, over fairly warm water here. So it's going to really ramp up and then get over that colder water that resides up here. But nevertheless, this is going to be a heck of a little storm. So boaters up there, beware of that. And eh, too bad it's not February because that could have been interesting. But it's hurricane season, so we'll keep talking about the potential for hurricanes, all right? So that's it. Um, I'll keep an eye on things, and I'll be back on Monday, and we'll see what evolves over the next few days. I'll certainly be uh, tweeting from time to time. Check the hurricanetrack.com blog. 
And one important thing, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, hit that like button. Apparently, the more likes, it has nothing to do with making me feel good. I see the views, and it's it's wonderful. It's great to have the reception that I do. But in the analytics, Google and the YouTube algorithms, when they see more likes, the video gets promoted more. And yes, it is good to have more people watching. Um, it's great if they like the video. You know, I think I do an okay job. But if you hit the like button, apparently that's a good thing. In the algorithm world, it has nothing to do with making me feel good. Your comments do that already, and I appreciate that. Uh, and subscribe, of course, for future updates. That always helps too. Alrighty, have a good rest of your Thursday and a great weekend when it gets here for pretty much everybody that is of school age. It's summertime. You're off and you're out of school, hopefully, except for year-round schools maybe. But nevertheless, have a great weekend ahead. Be safe out there as always. And um, I'll be back on Monday. Mark Zedith for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks as always for tuning in, and we'll chat again on Monday afternoon.